I am pumped about this, peeps. I've got a nine-year-old website that I actually forgot about for a little bit, and I'm now circling back to with a new growth plan for the site, which I'm gonna share with you guys here. And on that note, if you find this video helpful and insightful, be sure to do me a sweet one, you know the drill. Smash that like button because it helps me out in the YouTube algorithms, and do yourself a sweet one, hit the subscribe button so you get all of my latest insight into online business and digital marketing. Let's start off with the details on this site. The domain was registered in January 2014, nine years and three months ago. And I am personally the original purchaser of that domain. So I bought this domain back in January 2014, nine years and three months ago. I'm recording this now on April 13th, 2023. And then I started building the site in 2015. Now, interestingly enough, if we look at the SEMrush traffic data, which I've screenshotted here, the site really didn't get any traffic until 2017, like halfway through 2017. So, you know, for about two years, the site literally had no action, nothing, like nothing was happening with it. You know, and then as we can see here, it started growing at a pretty nice pace. Uh, there's about a hundred posts on it, or there were about a hundred posts on it. I recently have been publishing some more posts on that. We'll get to that when I talk about the plan for it, but uh, there's about a hundred posts on it. Most of them were published here in this 2015, 2016, early 2017 period. There were a few posts that were published on it. And I think the most recent one before I started revamping things was in January of 2020. So around here, but for the last few years, it has basically been stagnant with nothing happening on the website. And I actually literally forgot about the website up until um, up until just recently when I realized that the server had been shut off and everything went to zero. So somewhere in early 2023, January or February 2023, literally the traffic went to zero for like two weeks before I realized it. And then I remember the site and that is what sparked my kind of revitalized interest in growing the website again. So for a couple of years here, I basically forgot about the website. I literally forgot about it uh, and shut off the server to save some money, you know, on what I was spending for servers, had a server I didn't need, figured there wasn't anything on it, shut it down. And then I realized, oh shit, I actually had a site on there that was getting traffic and I came back to it. Okay. So yeah, that's what's happened over this, you know, nine year period. Like I said, took you know, basically a year before I started publishing on it, two years, nothing really happened on it. And, you know, then we kind of published some stuff, got some traffic and it's been growing. It's been growing at a nice pace, right? And what's awesome, we'll jump down here to what's awesome is it's been resilient to Google updates. So 2020, 2022, there were a lot of Google updates and you can see through that period, traffic has grown and it's still growing with no work, which is the weird thing about SEO and organic traffic. And if you follow any of my other videos or you've seen any of them out there, particularly my videos on paid ads, you will know that I'm kind of like anti-organic. Like, yes, I still do it. I still have sites that get organic traffic, but the bread and butter and the money in my life comes from paid traffic. That said, I still do a lot with organic traffic, but you know, like 99% of my returns and my income come from paid traffic business model. So yeah, uh, and you know, I'm kind of making that, saying that to make the point that weird things can happen with organic traffic, right? Like in this case, I've literally done no work here and um, things keep growing. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how else to say this, right? It's just weird. And then on the flip side, you'll run into case studies where people do all kinds of work. And we probably don't run into many case studies because people don't share these, but you'll run into examples where people are doing all kinds of work and things go downhill. It's just one of those weird things. So yeah, that is about, um, you know, what's been published on the site. Let's keep going here with the details. The content is high quality with many original images. So uh, the website is semi-related to a business that I used to own. It's kind of in like an incidental niche to that. So I was able to get a lot of high quality original images that nobody else out there had unless they stole my images. So there were basically no stock photos on the website. There are some stock photos, but most of them have been high quality original images. The site is currently getting about 9,500 visitors a month. Now, you might notice here that the chart from SEMrush caps it out at 3.6 thousand, uh, whereas I'm saying it's getting 9,500 visitors a month. You have to consider SEMrush is just an estimate. And I find that actual traffic on most sites is usually at least two times higher than the SEMrush estimate. So 
My actual traffic is about 9,500 visitors a month. SEM Rush shows a nice trend. It's good to look at for trends, but generally it kind of understates the actual amount of traffic. The site's currently monetized with an affiliate lead generation, right? So this is an affiliate program that anybody could sign up to and generate leads to. I am in the lead generation business where I sell leads directly to end buyers, non-affiliate style. Like the fundamental process is still the same, right? User has to complete a lead form online. But in my lead business, I'm selling leads to end buyers and getting a higher price. Uh, in this niche, they're just going to a general kind of affiliate program, an affiliate program that some, somebody, anybody, you could find out there online. No, I'm not gonna be sharing what that affiliate program is. We will talk kind of about the niche or, you know, that in the next, on the next page, I'll mention a little bit about the niche. Anyways, it's currently profiting. 400 to 500 dollars a month through that uh, lead generation affiliate program uh, no links have been built to the website at all probably you can probably tell that by the fact that i said i started the site in 2015 and nothing happened until 2017 it took some time and then one other thing i did kind of notice because traffic sort of took off here towards the end of 2020 or in 2021 is that the site was switched to Thrive Quick Themes in 2021, I believe. I, I don't remember the exact date, but at some point I switched it to Thrive Quick Theme. It was on a different WordPress theme before, but I started using Thrive Quick Theme several years ago, or not Quick Theme, but Thrive Themes in general. I started using their Thrive Theme Builder in like 2018, I believe. So as I was switching all my websites over, this one was probably the last one to get switched over in 2021. So we use Thrive Quick Theme for speed. It's not, that said, you know, even though the name is quick and it's intended for speed, I will say it's not really anything amazing that I've came to realize over the years. Some of my other sites still use regular old Thrive Theme Builder, but pretty much all of my websites use Thrive. This one in particular is using the Thrive Quick Theme. And, you know, I just point that out because Seems like traffic took off here, but with SEO and organic traffic, you really don't know if it was something you did or for some other factor, right? Like here I've done basically nothing and it's still growing. So that is the details on the website. What's awesome, it's been resilient to Google updates, still growing with no work and context, content gets indexed and ranks fast. So uh, right after I realized the site was down because of the server and I fixed it after a couple weeks of going to zero, we published some new content on it. It got indexed and it, you know, basically kind of floated right up to like page one or page two, depending on how competitive the keyword was. If it's not a very competitive keyword, they pretty much go right up to page one. If they are pretty competitive, they kind of fall, you know, in the top two, maybe three pages. And that's quickly, right? Like in a couple of days, they settle up there and I think they'll go up from there, maybe with some improvement or optimization. We could even move them up. But anyways, the content gets indexed and ranks fast. I like that. So let's go on to talking about the plan. But before we talk about the plan, let's talk about the problem. And this is part of the reason why the site was a low priority for me in the beginning. And that is, it's in a low monetization niche. Think, for example, steering wheel for Mercedes, right? Like there's some traffic for it, but there's only so many ways you can monetize and only so many things you can say about that. And that is also reflected in the domain name. Like literally just imagine we own MercedesSteeringWheels.com, right? And you're very, you're kind of in this weird little niche where it's like, unless you manufacture steering wheels, there's really no, no good way of monetizing. Yes, I've been able to pull some volume out of lead generation, but I'm kind of quite frankly, capped, right? Like with the, the traffic that we've got here, I'm basically exploiting the niche at this point. I am pretty much number one for this weird little obscure niche. And this is basically all the money that I can make with it. So the solution is to rebrand in a broad, broader way, right? So kind of go wider example, Mercedes interior components, right? So now at that point, you know, interior components, you have like seats, you have your glove compartment, you have inside storage, you have audio equipment. What else could you have in there? Uh, maybe you have like air fresheners, right? Floor mats, you have all that kind of stuff on the interior of the vehicle that's still semi-incidental to the content that you already have for steering wheel for Mercedes. So that's what I'm, go I would say, going to be doing. But that's actually already what I've done. So 
Let's now move into the master plan, and that was publish content, phase one. So I already did this here, and I think a little bit of it is being reflected in this. Again, SEM Rush is just an estimate, but since publishing more content, 50 pieces or so, I have seen a nice spike up in traffic. And actually, if I averaged the last week's traffic data, we would be up at way above 9,500 visitors a month. We'd probably be at like 13 or 14,000. So it's getting indexed and growing the traffic quickly, publishing the content on it. So published 50 new articles on it pretty quick here. Phase two, I pulled the site over to a staging environment and wanted to do some things on the actual site, like changing the domain. So going from mercedessteeringwheel.com to mercedesinterior.com, basically. Mind you, I'm not in the Mercedes or car niche. This is just kind of an example. Uh, so I changed the domain, did, you know, did the basic branding stuff along with the domain. I improved the website design because before it was really just like a shitty blog and it even looked horrible on mobile. Like the more I think about it, the more shocked I am that this thing was just growing in traffic. It was, it's been absolutely an abomination. Uh, so improved the site design, improved site speed. So I hired someone to come in and improve the site speed. So we're passing all of our core web vitals. And then I built content silos. So I actually just built four of them right, with the available content. And I think there's more room to grow that. So that was phase two. And I literally just completed that this morning, right? Before turning on and recording this video, whenever I started working on this and putting together this little PowerPoint here, uh, I completed all this and I did the website address change in Google Search Console. So it's a brand new domain that I switched to, like literally just registered it last week and have done the site migration in Search Console. So it has a new name, it has more content. It's optimized for speed and it's got the content silos built out. I think it looks pretty sharp. I'm really proud of it. Now let's go on to phase three, okay? So we've kind of broadened it. What can we do from here? Well, now I wanna to go to social content, particularly short form video. And I've already started making some of these uh, in conjunction with the content that was recently published. So short form, tall format video, on my YouTube channel, I talk a lot about that. So let me pull that up real quick here. Let me pull up a related video. Here we go. Um, how do I get to my channel? There we go. Videos. In one of these, right here I talk about it. I think these two both particular, why going hard into short form content, and then also the new strategy for building blogs to stand the test of time in 2023. I talk a lot about the short form video, tall format, tall rectangle, short form video, less than a minute. So. We're going to be making a lot of those content and getting them out there on social to really build a brand around all of this. And I think that's very important that I put the words build a brand in here. All right. I don't want to just be a, you know, a thin content affiliate website online. We want to build a brand. And then I also want to add some product affiliate content. There are some keywords that we're actually kind of ranking for and getting traffic for here, like best X and Y, right? Like those types of things, the best top, um, you know, best products for whatever, right? There's like four articles that I've got on the website that are actually ranking and they don't even have, they're getting traffic and they literally don't have any affiliate links in. And they're really just shitty articles when they should have product tables and all that stuff in them. So that is one of the plans to build out, you know, those four specific URLs, but also pick up a few more. I don't want to go crazy with it, but I do want to get a few product affiliates in there and I need to join the affiliate programs because they're not Amazon affiliate programs. So they're retailer specific, like Amazon will be one of them. Uh, but by and large, I can get more money going through other retailers for them. And some of the products also do not exist on Amazon. So yeah, need to do that. And then finally build out more silos and publish more content. I think that there's within this whole Mercedes interior components niche, so to say, I think that there's about nine to 12 silos I could build out. 
uh, and still be pretty much on topic, right? Or on point or still be relative. So I'm going to build those out and publish more content. That would be phase three. And I think that that can really metaphorically 10x my traffic and literally probably 10x my traffic as well. And then finally, phase four, um, and this will depend on how motivated I'm feeling, right? And what else is going on in my business world at that time. But I could launch a service business. So there is a, like a productized service that I've identified that would fit into the broad niche. So think about uh, if I'm doing Mercedes interior components, maybe I could sell floor mats and steering wheel covers. Actually, that's that would be a product business. Uh, but this would be related more specifically to the, my niche here, a service business. But think about it like that, something that people could buy online. And in this case, the service would be also done online. It would be a digital service. So let me further elaborate on that. So it would be a digital service. But right now, I'm very optimistic and enthusiastic here at phase three. That said, I'm trying not to get too stuck on it, right? Like I'm trying not to look down the road to phase four because we don't know how phase three will go. Search traffic does weird things for now. What I really want to do here, since we just completed this phase two, is I'm going to work a little bit here on the social content and product affiliate. Uh, this stuff, because it's going to require more money and capital investment for myself, I'm going to kind of go a little bit more slowly on. I really want to let it simmer and see some resilience as we've switched the domain name recently. So I'm going to kind of slow it down here in phase three and, you know, maybe take six months, eight months, rest of the year over phase three. I mean, eight months would put us at the end of 2023 before I start looking into phase four, unless phase three just, you know, blows it up real quick and we really see improvements. Um, and yeah, before we wind down, and hey, before we wind down, if you have found this video helpful and insightful, you know the drill, smash the like button to help me out in the YouTube algorithms. I really need your help on that. Uh, we'll just touch on the word about content. Content is going to be kept to a maximum of 1,250 words. I've seen no value in long form content. Lots of white space will be used on pages. Okay, so we'll talk about content length here. Uh, if you look at some of my other videos, I do talk about a website where we publish some long form blog posts, like 5,000 words, and we put custom charts, custom graphics, like literally, I would spend $1,000 to $1,500 on these custom graphics. And ultimately, I think it was a waste of money. I got nowhere with it. All of the traffic that I've gotten largely over the last few years has came from these 1,250 word blog posts max. And I know that's like a kind of like a pencil sharpened number, and that's because I have to put something in there. But Broadly speaking, 1,000 to 1,500 words. I, I don't know where I came up with this 1250. Actually, I do. It came from Income School. And that is what they recommended for a response post, I think, at one point. They may have changed that now, but that's just kind of where my content length has been for the last few years, and it's been working. That's what's been working. And then lots of white space. Because if you just publish a 1,250-word blog post on a, you know, on a page, it doesn't really look good. It kind of looks short, like you kind of need more. Right? Like it satisfies the topic, but it looks like you need more. Mm, excuse me. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of formatting with a lot of white space. And you can see how I'm doing it here with these little kind of sections, right? So content blocks is what they're called in Thrive Themes. I'm doing a lot of these and kind of having the, you know, a few sentences or a paragraph like centered underneath of a heading. I'm doing a lot of that. That's working well. So the user can kind of scroll through see the heading and then immediately consume, you know, or interpret the content that is in there. So that is my plan. That is where I am at with this nine-year-old site. Uh, in my plan for growing it, I'm pretty excited about it, very optimistic about it. On that note, guys, if you want to know anything else about the project other than what the actual site URL is, I really don't plan on sharing that, at least not at this point, maybe at some point down the road. But anything else about the project or any questions about growing a niche site or content website, let me know in the comments below. On that note, I'm calling it a wrap and signing off.